For more on what to expect at this year's Trade in Services Fair, let's bring in political and economic affairs commentator Einar Tangen. He's joining us live from Beijing. Well, this fair, the first major international and economic uh, trade event to go on in China since the pandemic. People are attending in person. It's, it's great to see. But what safety measures are in place as a result? Well, I mean, they're they're making sure that everybody is uh, registered. The, they have their track and trace program. Uh, both foreigners and uh, uh, locals are uh, being monitored. I mean, they're not insisting on uh, masks, although uh, anybody who's working in the uh, the actual exhibitions is wearing them. And because of the pandemic, China, of course, is kind of shifting its focus to the powerful domestic demand in the country. Um, how will that be reflected? Do you think at the fair? Uh, Mike, I mean, there, there's one one issue, uh, one major uh, success story that China has, and they're putting it on display, and that that is ex how they've handled COVID-19. And so there's a, a new segment that's being introduced that's talking about, you know, what China has done and what it can export. I mean. Uh, at the end of the day, what she said was that he's committed to a, uh, not only he, China, is committed to a win-win situation where tech, it's technology driven and it's shared across the, uh, the world. I mean, trade services are, you know, th these aren't assets that you, you buy and sell. These are things that countries can offer each other and they're the best example of how international trade can be inclusive and help all those involved. In essence, a win-win. And as we know, the U.S. is the largest service industry in the world. Uh, the service industry, of course, goes hand in hand with being a developed nation. So where does China stand at this point in terms of that? Well, it's, it's still uh, behind the count, but it's the largest market. And what you're seeing here is, you know, as we've seen with the international playout, uh, American firms, uh, European firms are demanding that they have access to China's market. Now, she made it very clear that he's going to be uh, lessening the negative list. Those are the lists of things that you can't do in China uh, as applied to uh, trade services. So this China is increasingly important as the largest stable market. Right now, it's the only one that's really operating at uh, you know, basically 99% uh, efficiency. So you're going to see a lot of interest. Uh, I was uh, very interested by the fact that although the number of participants are down due to uh, COVID-19 and the necessity of having a virtual link, the number of countries actually increased by two in terms of participation. Yeah, and China, of course, uh, has a massive population. We all know that. Uh, and people need services. What stands out at, uh, in terms of that at this fair, do you think? What's being offered? Well, I mean, there's, some of it is recovery plan. When you start talking about tourism and things like that, there are tourism services that are being offered domestically uh, because that is expected. It's good right now, and it's expected to get better. Remember, all the Chinese who were going abroad are now basically contained in China, um, and obviously service is going to be a big part of that because you know, right now Chinese consumers want higher quality. In terms of the international uh, tourism trade, there's a lot of countries who are looking for a rebound after things kind of um, you know, shape up and COVID-19 has been dealt with, hopefully, in the near future. So this is one area, uh, obviously, the, uh, the medical area I mentioned earlier. Uh, these are the things that really kind of stand out at, at this one. And so what is China's capacity in, in terms of providing uh, these quality services that you're talking about that people used to seek to go abroad for? You know, you're talking about health care and that sort of thing. Um, ha has the work come up? Well, yes, it has. I mean, uh, China is, is, you know, they talk about China's speed. Uh, China learns very quickly, especially if there's an economic, uh, you know, impetus there. If uh, this is a very competitive economy, uh, people see opportunities, they study, and then they develop their own. We see that in technology, uh, generally on the app app air areas and things like that, and also hardcore technologies like uh, Huawei uh, has produced. But this is also going on in the whole area of trade services. It's still not as developed as you would get in Europe and the United States but it is coming along. And like I said, everything follows markets, and China has the market. It does indeed. Einer, always a pleasure seeing you. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining us.